Hello everyone, welcome to Chillopedia, this is Maxim. Today you will get a chance to improve three parts of your cello skill, working on just one exercise. We will work on string crossings, bow distribution and shifts up to the fourth position. In order to do that, we will use the etude number 26 from Piatti cello method. In case you don't have this music in front of you, you can download it for free following the link in the description. I'm sure that in the course of this lesson you'll get many questions. Make sure that you share them with me. Just share your questions or ideas in the comment section and I will try to respond as soon as I can. Ok, let's get to work right away. In the first two measures we will have to deal with the bow distribution issue. Because you have to play six notes in just one bow followed by two separate notes. And in the first measure it will bring you to the tip of the bow and then when you play the second measure you will play six notes per bow again and that will bring you to the lower part of the bow where you will have to play two separate notes. This is how it will work. <laughs> It is always a good idea to save as much bow as you can play in just first few notes. This way you'll get luxury of spending even more bow for the rest of the bow stroke. I would play those first measures number of times to get used to that. That will make it easier for you to go on because we'll have to pay attention to other things. String crossings are notoriously difficult to handle. That's the main reason of squeaky notes we'll get once in a while. Just a general rule, you have to remember that every string should enjoy a different angle of the bow. And this is quite a basic idea, but it's one of the hardest skills to get, because you have to adjust the bow position every time you move from string to string. For training purposes, we could use the first measure of this etude. Right away you have to move from D to A string. You start on a D string with a proper angle and then right away while moving the bow to the upper string you need to adjust its angle. And you have to do it just a little bit. Uh, if you are confused the angle should be adjusted by turning the bow towards yourself this way. Let me exaggerate. You start on a D string like this and then you turn the bow that way. Of course not that much, but I hope now you can see what's going on. And then when you play two separate notes, it's the same thing but in reverse. You play one note on the A string and then when you go to the D string you have to move your bow back. And again, if I exaggerate, the angle will change from this to that. Here is how it works without exaggeration. In the same way, it's a good idea to work on the first few measures of this etude now paying attention to string crossings and changing the angle of the bow. That will make it easier for you to play through the whole etude. And the third big challenge here is to make all those shifts. At the beginning you don't have to make shifts, but starting from the middle of the second line you have to make shifts almost in every measure. Sometimes you are lucky to have the open string before you have to make a shift. Make sure that you always take advantage of that. You don't wait till the very last moment to make a shift, but rather use all the time you have available playing an open string to make a shift. You move your left hand a little bit in advance. For example, in the third measure of the second line, we have to make a shift to the second position to play G with the second finger and we have open string right before that. It should work this way. Mm -hmm. 
I'm sure you noticed that I started moving my left hand right when I played open D. If you don't do it, you will end up in this situation. Of course, it's possible to make a very quick shift. Sometimes we have to do it just like that. However, usually it's harder to make and sometimes when you have to make a quick shift, somehow it affects your right hand and there is a danger of making an accent. Whenever it's possible, try to avoid it. Try to take advantage of all open strings and just start moving your left hand to the new position. One of the useful ways to exercise making good shifts is to play just one note per ball. You don't have to deal with several issues at the same time. So playing it one note per ball eliminates most of the problems in the right hand and allows you to pay all the attention to the left hand. And I'm sure you remember that when you're making shifts, your thumb has to follow all the fingers. So under no circumstances, your thumb should be left behind. The idea of changing position is that all fingers, including thumb, should go together. This is how we develop very good sense of position, which will allow you to play with good precision. And now it's time to show you how to play this etude through. First, I will do it in slower tempo, quarter note 60. When you're ready, try to play with me. It might be very good exercise for you not just to make all those shifts and pay attention to string crossings and bow distribution, but also for your skill to stay right on top of the beat. After a few times you play through in this tempo, you might be ready to move up. Let's play it now in tempo quarter note 92. Playing in a faster tempo, of course, is more difficult for left hand, but it's a bit easier for ball distribution. You don't have to save that much of the ball. But if you paid attention to that, playing in slower tempo, then moving into faster tempo, will make it to sound more relaxed because then you will have more than enough ball to play it. You trained yourself well and now it will be time to enjoy it. Mm-hmm. 
course, you notice that there's a second part to follow your melody. It's usually the part that teacher should use to accompany his or her student. Let me do it this way. I'll play that second part with you in the same tempo, quarter note 92. This way you will also enjoy harmonic accompaniment. Hopefully we will sound well together. If it doesn't happen the first time, give it another try, and I'm sure that moment of enjoyment will come. If you enjoy playing this duet with me, maybe you'll consider becoming Chilopedia Patreon supporter. There I post a lot of duets to play together. Follow the link in description to check it out. And that's it for today. I hope you improved those three parts of your technique. Come back to Chilopedia, we'll have a lot more to learn together. See you soon.